mentally speaking, I think we've hit the stage of we're beyond the need to have a lot of young energy and going out and having a lot of fun. Very so old. You're so old. You are an old man. Sana likes to talk like this, but in reality, she always <laughs> wants to be home by 10 p.m. No, okay. What's up, guys? Welcome to another episode of our car cast. Yo, we're back. It's been a while since we're back in the good old Kiji, the name of our Tesla. For those of our, <laughs> for, those of you, <laughs> for those of you who are new to the car cast, uh, we, we call our car Kiji. It's true. Uh, what the car cast is, we basically drive a scenic drive and you get to listen to what we're talking about. Today we got to talk about a lot of stuff. We're going to talk about stuff. Shiba Inu, we're going to talk about Malibu. Weddings. Malibu, yeah, let's Weather. start there. I mean, where are we right now? Bro, uh, we're, we're in Malibu. Like, we're in the mountains of Malibu right now. Look, look at those mountains. Like, one of my favorite things of Malibu is the drive to get to the beach. Cutting through these mountains is so beautiful. Honestly, yeah, like we're down, this is Malibu Canyon Road. Mm -hmm. And I like to think of Malibu as sort of my personal therapist. I don't, <laughs> uh, you know, I, I, you know, <laughs> therapy is, is something, but like for me, it's just like when you get, when you get in the mountains, you go to the beaches in Malibu to hear the, the waves crashing, like that's all you need. That's I mean, yeah, need. like it's therapeutic. Yeah. You're saying the waves are therapeutic. Yeah, we went, we woke up early this morning. We came out to Malibu, extremely foggy, like no sun in sight. Yeah. And it, I think it said it was like 57 degrees. We're doing our hike. We went to the beach in this gloomy weather. And we're like, bruh, Malibu <laughs> weather is like random. Honestly, yeah, we were thinking maybe we should just save the car cast for another day, but then after we got lunch, the sun came out. Yeah, and it's still a little hazy, but I think it gives it a dreamy look. Yeah, the sun was like, you know what? You guys plan to have a car cast today. Yeah. I'll come out just so you can have a nice little scenic exactly. drive. <laughs> I actually think that's exactly what happened. For sure. But yeah, this is a pretty solid spot. Um, and a fun fact that you may or may not know is that Barry and I actually got married in Malibu. That's true. How long ago, Barry? Oof, that was uh, February 2018, so that's like... Two 2018? Oh, no, sorry, 2020. <laughs> well, it's complicated. Technically, we got married in 2018. Yes. But we had our, like, celebration with a venue and everything. That was in 2020. So that was, that was in Malibu. That's it's been true. like a year and a half. Year and yeah, a half. February 1st, 2020, pre-Panda Express. <laughs> yeah. So that's pretty crazy, actually. But something very interesting about Malibu and weather and wedding is... We actually saw the venue for the first time ever when we were venue hunting, you could say, exactly a year before the wedding, like yeah. February 1st, 2019. Oh, that was wild. And that it was, was wild. wild. We were on our way there. We had an appointment at like, I think 11 a.m. to check out the venue. It's pouring, just straight up pouring, like one, yeah. really bad weather for LA, you know, like it was actually pouring and the roads on PCH near Malibu started closing down because of flooding. This was a, this was making national headlines. This was yeah. a time when like California and SoCal, there was a bunch of fire, yeah. fires, a bunch of mudslides. Malibu slides. houses like burned down. Remember with, like Kim yeah. Kardashian, Miley Cyrus, that whole thing. Yeah, and not yeah. only the fires, like the mudslides of like yeah. the, the rains coming down after the fire had all the mud like just pouring yeah. down, and it was causing a lot of road closures, a lot of difficulties. Yeah, yeah and we were, our, we're just our, driving it. Our wedding venue was like right in the middle of yeah. all this. Because the wedding <laughs> venue was on the beach, right? And it was like right. Basically, like imagine like the venues on the beach, all the mountains behind it is where those fires were. Yeah. So we show up at the venue and we're like, okay, it's raining. A little alarming because we're playing getting married on this day next year. What if the weather's <laughs> like this? And then like, you know, we're seeing the um, balcony of the venue, which she you knows like on the beach, you can see the water. And we look and we're like, wow, very nice. Look to our left huge mudslide pouring down from the mountains into the water like the yeah. biggest mudslide of all time just pouring into the ocean i was like oh yeah it was <laughs> it's like you know thought i'm sure you know the thoughts that go in our mind are like well if our wedding was today it wouldn't happen yeah would like that would be canceled yeah and so like should we take the risk and have it next year and then hopefully it's gonna be all right yeah luckily we did alhamdulillah things worked out yeah. weather was good yeah the weather it was but, 80 and sunny that day yeah. complete 180 from before but it was just so interesting like we're talking we go to the venue we're talking we had a wedding coordinator who was there the venue owner who was there they were just talking about all the fires and i was like damn you live in yeah. la like didn't see any of that you should also tell the story of across the street of our venue there was a starbucks 
which holds oh. a heavy place in Sana's heart because she lost some good stuff there. What'd you lose? Oh my god. I think th this was my first time visiting you in LA, I think. So I think it was like 2018, I yeah. would say. Like when yeah. Barry first moved here, I came out here to visit him. You know, we're doing all the spots. Every day is a new LA gem. And Malibu was one of the best spots. And I'm like, wow, what an amazing place. I'm like, Barry, I have to pee. <laughs> Barry's like, okay, yeah. yeah and so right. I found the Starbucks. Yeah. And you go and pee? I go and pee. I bring my pouch with me. What's in this pouch, you may ask? Some important things are in this pouch. Okay, one, I had my passport, unknown why. Like, I did not need passport to travel. So why did I randomly have it on me? Don't know. Yeah. And $500 in cash in this pouch. Yeah. And this was a pouch that, for reference, this pouch, I used it previously when I went abroad. This was my emergency cash. And I realized I also wanted to get a drink at Starbucks and I only had my cash on me, so I brought the pouch with me. And I'm like, okay. And then I go and pee. And then what happens? I just forgot about it. I forgot about it, but did I know I forgot about it? No. No, 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 no. It's a, a whole day pass. The next day, Barry's at work, and I'm just out here having a good time by myself. Now I'm in Beverly Hills, <laughs> just taking out the Virginia Drive. And then I'm like, oh, I'm gonna deposit that cash now, because I don't wanna carry all that cash. Looks in bag. Nope. There's no pouch. I'm like, oh, I'm missing the pouch. Okay, let's not panic. Maybe I left it in the apartment. I panic regardless. Do not find it anywhere. Realize later that I left it in the Starbucks the previous day. Yeah, I couldn't believe it. I was like, who carries a pouch with $500? I was going to deposit it. With all this money cash and your passport. To deposit. The passport felt random. Like, why was that there? Why was that there? So in reality, it was $500 plus I just renewed that air, that passport. So it was $500 plus the one sixty five to renew it. Yeah. And then, so it was a big L. And then two years later, we get married there. We get married across the street. Yep. <laughs> yep. And another fun fact is if... Any of you people have watched Hannah Montana? The house that Hannah Montana was filmed in was right next door to our venue. So there were a lot of cool fun facts like that. I'm like, Malibu is just like a great place. I I would love to live here. I'm trying to convince sure. that. I'm trying to convince that to, to let us live here for a year. <laughs> uh, I, I will allow it. <laughs> because it'd be such a nice experience. Like it's isolated from the hustle and bustle of LA. The Isn't that the problem though? The population of Malibu is wild. I yeah, thought guess it was. It. Guess right now. Yeah, I guess. Okay, enough guessing. All right, it's twelve thousand people. Twelve thousand. It's, it's not big. It's like it's almost a small, small town. Yeah. And you know, you have you have a lot of these private beaches. You have a lot of isolation away from all of the noise, a lot of the light pollution, a lot of the noise pollution that comes from LA. And it's a nice little private area, and that just sounds so great. But like, isn't the isolation the problem? Like, when I think about places I want to live. Uh, as a young person, um, I would like to live somewhere that's a little bit not popping per se, but just has more stuff. Like, bro. I, I agree, but like you know, we've we've had that. We've lived kind of in the middle of LA for a couple years now. I mean, are we... isolations for people who are like <laughs> in their forties or fifties who just are over it. I think we've bro, hit that. I think we're twenty five and twenty four. Mentally speaking, I think we've hit the stage of we're beyond the need to have a lot of young energy and going out and having a lot of fun. Very so old. You're so old. You are an old man. Sana likes to talk like this, but in reality, she always <laughs> wants to be home by 10 p.m. No, okay, first she of all, that has nothing to do with isolation, though. Yes, I like being home early, okay? <laughs> but it has nothing to do with, like, where I am. Like, listen, I like going to Barry's Boot Camp. The, the nearest Barry's Boot Camp is only a four-minute drive. Barry wants to show me some apartment in Malibu and I was like okay let me see where Barry's boot camp is 30 minutes away I'm never gonna go there's no way I'm ever gonna go these are small things these are small things Trader Joe's 25 minutes away I think uh <laughs> hope you know let, let's see how the next few months go and who knows maybe we'll do more car casts in the Malibu area because we live there we'll see you never know yep yeah, I just I just feel like you want to be old right now the isolation matters. Also, because it's like only 14, what'd you say, 14K people or 10? 12K, 12,000. Well, considering it's only 12K people, there's not, like the apartment real estate market is limited. <laughs> there's not that many places to live. 
the because best, it's the like... Best, the best things in life are hard to find. Okay. When there's a lot of something, huh. it loses a little bit of... Uh, loses a, a lot of desire. But isn't choice when looking for an apartment, especially in a world where we're all working from home, pretty important? <sighs> and the limited real estate only means that it's going to be more pricey. Yeah, I mean, I'm not saying, I'm not saying, you know, I think a year is fine if we're, if we're trying things out. <laughs> just, it's, just testing it out. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's, that's part, you know, that's also an argument of how this is sort of not old, where I think as, as young people, we should take advantage of trying new places, seeing what life has to offer. No, in different I, I'm parts aligned the there. I'm aligned there, especially when you're renting. Look at this. Look at uh, look at these nice uh, houses in the hills. That's very true. But this but this side of Malibu, or well, this is East Malibu. This is a little yeah. bit less isolated. It's true. It's true. We it's can true. we can compromise. Maybe something here. Oh, he's just like yeah, yeah. Let's try it <laughs> out. Like Malibu is like so crazy expensive. Like we got some rich people living here. Maya Cyrus lives here. Her song Malibu about Malibu. One time when we were driving through the mountains, we saw Caitlyn Jenner leaving her house. And I was like, I know oh, where you live now. Them. I know, I know. And the weirdest thing is I needed to confirm that it was her. So then what I ended up doing was Googling her name with the car. Cause it was like, um, what are those cars called? The Escalade? Yeah, the Escalade, yeah. yeah. And then there was like this whole story about how like she caused an accident. And I was like, oh, that was kind of crazy. I've got this watermelon agua fresca from this oh, restaurant yeah. we went today, which was awesome. They had awesome. these sushi burritos. Apparently that's a thing now. And I, sushi burritos. Yeah, tech, well, I guess technically I didn't have, I had a lobster in a burrito. Well, there's lobster in sushi form. Was it, but it was, it, was it, did I have, was it raw lobster that I was eating? I feel like it was cooked. Regardless, I mean, it was an amazing burrito and it's a place called Howdy's in Malibu. Another, another reason to move to Malibu. Yes, it's a place called the Howdy's. Malibu Country Mart. Yeah. Or Mart. Definitely a place we're going to go again. <laughs> yeah, it actually smacked very properly. I got the spicy tuna, tuna, <laughs> spicy tuna, <laughs> the spicy tuna. Sushi yeah. burrito. But I don't think it was a sushi burrito, now that I processed it. So like the wrap was like rice paper. Mm -hmm. It wasn't like sushi burritos are normally seaweed. There was no seaweed in the equation. So I think it was just a burrito combined with spicy sand. <laughs> like it was, I don't, yeah. I don't think it was a sushi burrito now that I'm processing. Mm -hmm. Like the meat inside was a sushi burrito. Speaking of burritos that are not your typical burrito, we went to a place that was an Indian and Mexican fusion place. Oh yeah. There is so much potential here, man. Like I got a chicken tikka masala burrito and it had so much potential. What's the world coming to? They're just combining burritos. like genres of food. Burritos make so sen so much sense though. Like if you think I, about it, I love burritos. The, I love what the, what's happening in the world when you have Mexican and Indian food coming together. You got Japanese food and Mexican I love food together. fusion food. That's a sign that racism is coming to an end. Yeah. Eventually, we love the fusion. When people still when people continue fusing uh -huh. together, yeah. then all of a sudden racism will be gone. It's too Actually, hard to be racist. There's like that picture, I think it was on like a Time magazine of what they think a typical person will look like a hundred years from now. Yeah. And it's like a mixed individual. Yeah, like, I mean it makes sense. Just fuse the cultures, <laughs> but like I just Wow, so the Indian burrito, listen, chicken tikka masala burrito, selling fantastic, had rice, had chicken, had beans, but that was it. <laughs> burritos need more, but your burritos need the sidekicks. Sidekicks are the vegetables yeah. and stuff. That's Agree true. or disagree? I agree, you can't have a burrito with just like two ingredients, then it's a little yes. bit too Well, it was too three boring. in this situation, okay, Barry, keep up. Keep up, it was three, boring, yeah. you were there. <laughs> Barry did not get a burrito, he just got lamb vindaloo. Yeah. A regular dish. You're talking about fusing cultures, but you just got one side of the culture. You did not That's fuse true. them. They but had look, tacos too. If, if I was a policymaker, I would make it a policy where you could only marry and 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 uh, have kids with people mm -hmm. outside of your own background. Uh -uh. What will happen is in two generations, let's uh -huh. say in 80 years, yeah. racism gone. Everyone's combined. All of a sudden, it's too hard to be racist. Uh, you know, Barry's Barry, Barry really thinks in simple terms. He's like, yep, that's it. Look I'll at, end it all. 
That, that's <laughs> look, it. Look at me. When I come from two two backgrounds, yeah, people can't be racist to me. It's like because <laughs> they're like, like what like, are, where you? are you? I can't. I don't know how to make fun of you. It's like you know. They're it's like too I hard. don't know what you are. So I'm <laughs> yeah. just gonna keep it there. But instead, they say something like, "So, what are you?" I that's, I've gotten asked that question before. They're just like, "What are you?" I'm like. That's, that's a fair like question. a deep question. That's, that's a, a deep question. question. No, it's deep. Yeah. Like, what are you? Yeah. It's hard to answer if you think about it. That's true. You're just thinking in simple terms now, but you know, if that if that's what it takes. Let's let's talk Shiba Inu. Sana, have you heard of Shiba Inu? From you, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I haven't heard about it from you. It's a big talk in, in the news these days. The big I'll, talk. I'll give a nice little. Uh, short synopsis of what it is it's a cryptocurrency and uh, you know uh, most people by now probably know what cryptocurrency is never heard of it but it's a uh, it's a digital currency that people are treating it as investments uh, and Shiba Inu is this new thing that was sort of created as a joke and aren't they all yeah I mean so basically there was this there's this one guy who invested eight thousand dollars in August of last year into this thing called Shiba Inu, which is a basically a token, a digital currency, if you will. And now it's worth over $5 billion, which is wild, because the price of it just wild. keeps going up. Wild. And over the past like couple of weeks, it's already like over, uh, it's over double just in the, just in the matter of a few days. So if you put in, let's say $1,000, it comes out as $2,000 in a week. And it's crazy. It's crazy. Uh, it goes to show that you can be a joke and still make it. Yeah, I mean, I mean, imagine, imagine you had you were someone who like started a lot of businesses, a self-made man, and you like you know you 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 got all these, you, you know you, you you amassed a lot of wealth. And it's like wow, I worked really hard, and then you see the guy who's like, <laughs> yeah, I just put some money into this joke coin, and now it's it's worth more than anything you'll ever make. It's kind of funny when you think about it. We we live in an interesting time now. Yeah, it's like. A very interesting time where people like that who take the risk and just really out here doing okay. Yeah. What what I don't understand is how people are still buying lottery tickets <laughs> when when you can Well a lottery ticket is what, a few dollars to buy? Yeah. Versus investing like a thousand dollars. You don't you can invest a couple of pennies, but uh, when when people the, the odds of, of lottery tickets are so small mm -hmm. like a fraction of a fraction of a fraction of a mm -hmm. percent to yeah. get anything uh, it's like gambling at its worst at its worst like gambling in general uh -huh. is, is wrong of course and bad but true but when it's like when the odds are so against you it's like what's the point true um, and I think people are maybe starting to see cryptocurrencies like these as sort of a, a way out an escape uh, you know a chance yeah I agree, actually. I think, I think people are getting more and more educated on crypto now. Like back in like 2016, when like Bitcoin was like a thing, people were like, "What?" And yeah. I feel like a lot of people were still scared of it. But I yeah. think now it's getting more normalized. Oh, and for sure. All these joke coins are out here with Elon Musk just snap of a finger defining the <laughs> value of it. <laughs> yeah, I mean the positive is that it increases exposure for cryptocurrency in general, which I think will. Yeah, progresses the progresses the economics of, of the future of the world. Like you got you got countries now like El Salvador, which are making uh, El Salvador made Bitcoin its national currency. Yeah, like how's it doing now? Like because a, Bitcoin their economy is, is more stable than their no, no, actual. No, but currency. I'm saying how is their economy doing now? They chose to do that because. Well, it was a recent thing. I don't think it's the effects are really. Mm. It's too early to tell. Interesting. That is pretty interesting. I but say. imagine. I mean, I think. Uh, I think a hundred years from now, you'll see a lot more countries, and who knows? Maybe maybe Bitcoin will become the, the normal currency over True. U.S. dollar and That's other, crazy. other popular well. currencies. It's like crazy. Yeah. Wow. Are we still in Malibu? Yeah, we're still in Malibu. Still we're in Malibu. now on the east side of Malibu, going to intersect with Santa Monica. Not quite yet, but soon. But soon. All right, yeah. all right. Well, this has been a good time. We love Malibu. Yep, we're hitting Sunset Boulevard. Our second car cast intersected at this Whoa, exact point. Oh, this is where so we So we're ended. taking full circle. That's actually crazy. Yeah, if well, you want to check it full out. Full circle if this was the last one, but this isn't the last car cast. That's true, it's not the last yeah, car cast. We're, we're, but you know, it, you, can, you can make a little loop. If you want to yeah. check it back, it was driving on Sunset Boulevard, our yes. second car cast that we posted true. many months ago. True. 
It's been another great episode. Thank you all for joining. We will see you all next time. Peace and love as always.